So what is hybridization and why do we talk about it? So when you have an atom, you have a nucleus in the center and the electrons are flying around it. And the electrons are moving at really high speeds, around 2,200 kilometers per second, in a really small space. So they tend to smear out over an area and form these sorts of clouds of where you're likely to find them. So orbitals are those clouds where that electrons smear in because they're moving so fast in such a small space. So orbitals are clouds where you're likely to find an electron. Now, depending on how much energy an electron has, it'll smear in a different shape. At the lower energies, electrons tend to move in a sphere. And so that cloud that it would tend to, to fly in is called an s orbital if it's moving in a sphere. And you can remember that because s is the first letter in the word sphere. If the electron gets a little bit more energy, it starts flying around in a sort of peanut shape. And so those clouds that are peanut shaped that the electron is flying in are called p orbitals. And you can sort of remember that because p is the first letter in the word peanut. And there are three types of these. There's one along the y-axis, that's the py orbital. One along the x-axis, that's the px orbital. And one along the z-axis in the third dimension. That's the pz orbital. So you have these sorts of clouds that electrons are flying in, smearing over, because they're moving so fast around a nucleus. So those are orbitals. Now the orbitals around a central atom determine the shape of a molecule, because different atoms stick together when their orbitals overlap. So whatever direction their orbitals are pointing in, that's where another atom is going to connect, and that will give you the shape of the molecule. So orbitals determine shapes. So for example, if you wanted to find out the shape of CH4, which is methane, first you'd want to think about what are the orbitals like around the carbon atom. And so here, this is what this drawing is. You have the s orbital, that sphere in the center, the px orbital, the py orbital, and the pz orbital. And so these are all the ways that electrons are flying around that central carbon atom. So then, how would the hydrogens connect? Well, the hydrogens have, hydrogens have their own small s orbitals. That's what these black circles are trying to represent. And they would connect by overlapping with some of the orbitals on the carbon. And so you'd expect it to get a shape something like this on the right. The only problem is when you go and shine light on methane and see what sorts of shadows it casts, you find out that the shape of methane is not that at all, but rather is this. And so you wouldn't predict that based on the orbitals that we already saw, the s and the p orbitals. So we have a, a disagreement between our theory and experiment. And so we need to tweak our theory not throw it away entirely, but change it a little bit so that it agrees with the data that we're collecting. And hybridization is a way of doing that. How do you make the theory, how do you change the theory to make it agree with experiment? You mix the orbitals together. So you'll take those, the 1s and the 3p orbitals, and you'll start to mix them together. You'll end up with mixed orbitals in a fancy way of saying mixed is hybrid. So hybrid orbitals are just orbitals that have been made from other orbitals mixed together, and hybridization is mixing orbitals together. So what do I mean when I say a mixed orbital? How can you mix orbitals? Well, let's say you took one s orbital, and you took one of the p orbitals, and you mixed them together. You'd end up, the s would sort of combine with one of the lobes on the p, make it fatter, and so you'd end up with a mixed orbital or a hybrid orbital. What type of hybrid orbital? An sp hybrid orbital. The name is telling you what types of orbitals you mix together to get the hybrid orbital. So I mixed one s orbital with one p orbital and I got an sp orbital. If you take one s orbital and you mix it with two p orbitals, you end up getting the same, a similar sort of thing where one of the ends, one of the lobes gets enlarged. And this new hybrid orbital will be called an sp2 orbital. 
Notice that the 2 is not telling you how many electrons are in the orbital. It's not telling you that the p is squared. It's telling you how many p orbitals you mix together. So to get this hybrid orbital, I mixed 1s orbital and 2 p orbitals. And that's what that 2 there is telling you. Let's say, again, you took 1s orbital and you mixed it with 3 p orbitals. You'd get a mixed or a hybrid orbital, and that orbital will be called sp3. And again, the 3 here is telling you how many p orbitals you mix together, in this case, 3 of them, to get this hybrid orbital. So if you did that, if you mixed the s, one of the, uh, the one s orbital with 3 p orbitals, you'd end up getting 4 of the mixed orbitals, 4 sp3 hybrid orbitals. And then those would push each other, each away from each other until you get this shape down here, which is called tetrahedral. And then, if you imagine hydrogen at attaching to a molecule that had these orbitals, it would attach on the ends here, and you'd predict the shape that we observed before for CH4. If these green and gray orbitals are the ones that are around the carbon. So, what are hybrid orbitals? They're orbitals made by mixing other orbitals together. And why would you do such a thing? Why would you make hybrid orbitals? To predict the right shapes of molecules. So you can see that hybrid orbitals are very closely connected with shapes. And so there are tables that connect the two, that connect shapes on the left hand here with the types of, S of mixed orbitals or hybrid orbitals that give them. And so that's where, we, where these tables come from that we use to solve problems.